we're now looking at the big uh, central section of John chapter 6. I call this In Search of Bread. The whole of uh, John chapter 6 uh, seems to focus around uh, this idea of bread with the feeding of the 5,000 at the beginning of the chapter and now this whole conversation about Jesus being the bread of life. As always, I do encourage you to take some time just to read the passage yourself. If you are new to this channel, then I encourage you to uh, subscribe to the channel and like this video, share it with others if you find it uh, helpful, uh, make some comments. And one of the key things that uh, we see in John is that he is giving us evidence about Jesus. Evidence which calls for belief in Jesus, belief which leads to life. And we're going to see all of these at play in this section of John's Gospel. And as I said, take some time just to read it. There's a lot in here. And also, uh, spend some time praying. Ask God to help you to understand His Word better uh, so that these truths would challenge and change and transform you. One great passage, just as an Old Testament cross-reference, um, is Isaiah 55. Verse 1 to 3. It would be great to just go and read through those verses and familiarize yourself with them. They are a great Old Testament parallel where Isaiah says, Don't uh, spend your money on that which is not bread or that which cannot satisfy. And here Jesus picks up on those Old Testament ideas, on this idea of bread. And as I said, um, bread and loaves are a really big key idea or theme that comes through this whole section and most specifically the bread from heaven. So just when you see that kind of repetition throughout a passage, then it's a real key to help you see uh, bread is a, is a big key theme. But just looking at evidence, John tells us in chapter 20 that there were many other signs that Jesus performed, but he uh, gives us specific signs that we might believe. And so we see um, in this section, John is also speaking about evidence, but one of the, the bigger focuses out of these three, or the bigger two, are around belief and life. And in many ways, this verse 29, uh, to believe in the one he has sent, John is unpacking the nature of belief through this section. What does it really mean uh, to believe in Jesus? And although the word believe isn't used in in these verses this whole big section uh, is around what it means uh, to believe because all of these phrases to eat and drink and feed um, are all telling us uh, what it means to believe it's an inward uh, taking in the truths about Jesus so it's not a a literal eating the flesh or drinking the blood. Uh, they are all pictures to help us understand what it means to believe. To believe in Jesus, to, to eat his flesh, to drink his blood, to feed on him. So we've got some evidence all talking about belief and then this key theme of belief which leads to life. Um, over and over again in this section we will see Jesus speaking about uh, the life that comes through him and the fact that he will raise those who believe up on the last day. They will have eternal life through him. He will rise, raise them up on the last day. I will raise them up on the last day. So you see lots of repeated ideas in here, talking about eternal life and the bread of life, those who will live forever. And Jesus saying, I came to give my life for the life of the world. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. 
gain some more eternal life. I will raise them up at the last day. So already we can see lots of very key repetition throughout this section. The signs. Now, what sign then will you give us? The crowd ask. The irony is at the beginning of chapter 6, Jesus had already given them an incredible sign. Jesus had multiplied the, the bread and the fish. Them asking for a sign is incredibly ironic because Jesus has given them the sign that they already needed. Um, he was the one who came down from heaven. He is this bread of life. And that is one of the key uh, phrases that is it's the first of the I am, the official seven I am statements in John's gospel. And Jesus saying, I am the bread. I am the bread that came down from heaven. I am the bread of life. Now just picking up on the I am side of this phrase, uh, remember we saw last week that Jesus in the storm came and said, I am, don't be afraid. It's the name that God used for himself in Exodus 14 verse 3. And Jesus is saying, I am, I am God. But then he says, I am the bread of life. And it's important for us just to think through, well, what's the importance of bread? And particularly in these days, bread was linked with life. You had to eat bread every day if you wanted to keep living. And Jesus is saying, I am the bread of life. And he says some incredible things in, in here. Whoever comes to me, so we'll see this idea of coming to Jesus. He says, they will never go hungry. They will never be thirsty. So the bread that they had eaten, this is just the next day, it was the day before that they had eaten uh, that miraculous meal with the Lord of all creation. And now, this next day, they wanted bread again, normal bread. And Jesus says, that's actually not why I've come. That was just a sign. You got to eat the loaves. You had your fill. But actually, they should have been looking for much more than just the signs. They should have seen that this one doing the signs has come down from heaven. And he says, I am the bread of life. If you eat me, you'll never go hungry. If you believe in me, you'll never be thirsty. But Jesus is saying massive things in here. And again, uh, we see he used this word, uh, come, come to me. Now, verse 44 here is just important for us to slow down on a little bit. Um, it says, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them. Now, that has sometimes been used by some to say, uh, people have absolutely no choice. The Father does all the work, but we've got to be careful. There is God's sovereignty. Yes, God is absolutely sovereign in calling us, drawing us to himself. But there is the human responsibility um, that comes in. So throughout this section, we see uh, that there is the call to come and to believe um, and to eat. So there is a human responsibility side, but yes, absolutely, no one will come unless the Father draws that person. So God is the key worker in our salvation. So if you take verse 37, for example, all those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. And then verse 44, no one can come unless the Father who sent me draws them and they work together. Once a person comes to Jesus, they will realize that behind their willing decision to come and believe lies the mysterious, invisible work of the Father who all along was drawing them to Christ. And Jesus in this section is saying, once you come, once you eat, you'll never be hungry again. 
See, Jesus is the one who truly satisfies. He's the one who gives life, eternal life, that begins now and will continue on the day of eternity when he raises up those who believe to be with him forever. Because their ancestors who ate the manna in the wilderness, they died. You see, he says that a couple of times in this section. And yes, they had this miraculous meal, but they died. You see it there again, they died. But then he says, whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. And verse 51 is such a key verse. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. And if we think about uh, John 1 verse 14, we said, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen His glory. Now, it's understandable that they are a little bit confused here, actually very confused. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? But we know how the story continues. And we know that Jesus, the Word made flesh, eventually died on the cross, giving his life for the life of the world. And Jesus wants them and us to be absolutely sure of this truth. He says over and again, over and again very truly, I tell you, very truly, I tell you, very truly, I tell you, I'm telling you the absolute truth. This is what you need to know. And some of the things he says is, I am the son of man who will give you eternal life. You see, again, this son of man language, it's Daniel 7 language. If you're going to read about the son of man who could approach the ancient of days. And Jesus is saying, I am the son of man. John 1 verse 14, I've come in the flesh and whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood. Obviously, as we hear these words as um, Christians, we, we think of the Lord's Supper. And the Lord's Supper is pointing, pointing us back to Jesus' words here. But as I said, this eating and this drinking and this feeding is growing our understanding of the nature of belief. And just as we need to eat food uh, daily, Jesus is saying, you need to believe in me daily. Keep trusting in me. Keep eating. Keep drinking. Keep feeding. Because I am the one who will enable you to never go hungry again, to never thirst again. And again, that rings back to John 4. Verse 13 and 14, where Jesus was with the woman at the well and also said that, would, that he would give water so that she would never thirst. Uh, John is building on these ideas. And we see here that Jesus is saying, I am the one who has come who can give you absolutely everything that you need. And sadly, throughout this section, uh, we see the crowd and we see the Jews. And so many in the crowd, so many of these Jews, didn't believe. They missed the sign. And John wants us to not miss the sign. He wants us to see that Jesus really is the bread of life. That whoever believes in him has eternal life. And that is true because this bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Jesus fulfilled this. On the cross. So in many ways, this verse 51 is the, the heart of this discourse where Jesus is pointing ahead to that event in which his flesh would be given as the bread of life. He would be broken so that the world who trust in him, those who believe in him, can have life. And so as you dig further into this passage, I pray that it would help you to understand the nature of belief, that it is a constant eating and drinking and feeding, a daily thing. We can't just say, oh, I've trusted in Jesus and now I'm going to sit around and wait for eternity. No, Jesus is urging his hearers to come to him as the bread of life, just as bread is a daily thing that they need to eat. So Jesus is a daily, the daily bread of life that we need to believe in. 
so that we will have life now and so that we will one day enjoy eternal life when he raises us up on that last day. So as you dig in further, I pray that this will grow your understanding of Jesus, rejoicing in him and who he is and what he's done. And let's pray that many will continue to see this evidence that John has recorded for us, that it would grow their belief and that many more would come to enjoy this life that Jesus came to win. Well, God bless as you dig into these incredible verses further. Thank you.